You authorized your butcher to pay two red points for every pound. Save every drop of used fat every day. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Halfway relief may not do when you think you need mineral oil, because your condition is often accompanied by stomach hyperacidity. If so, you should take Haley's M.O. for complete relief. Haley's M.O. relieves two ways because it combines mineral oil with acid-neutralizing milk of magnesia. Caution use only as directed. Get Haley's M.O. Now we present once again Mary Noble, backstage wife. The story of a little Iowa girl who marries America's most handsome actor, Larry Noble, matinee idol of a million other women. And the story of the changes war has brought since Larry went into the service. clean with Energine. Do as smart women everywhere are doing. Keep a bottle of Energine shoe white on hand to give your shoes the fresh, clean whiteness of driven snow. You see, Energine shoe white does two important jobs for you, not just one. It cleans as it whitens. Yes, at the very same time that Energine shoe white gives your shoes a snowy white radiance, it also cleans them beautifully. Everybody knows how unattractive white shoes look when they're only half clean, white here and splotchy there. But Energine Shoe White actually makes dirt and smudges disappear while it whitens your shoes. And it whitens them evenly with a fleecy white finish that's the same from toe to heel. Energine Shoe White is easy to use, goes on in a jiffy, and there's nothing that stays on better. Remember, keep it clean with Energine. And now, backstage wife, the beloved story of Mary Noble, and the changes which have come into Mary's life since her husband Larry, former Broadway star, went into the Coast Guard. Larry, you know, is now spending a 30-day leave with his family at their home in Rosehaven, Long Island. Well, as you'll recall, earlier tonight, Mary unexpectedly left her house and went to the palatial home of Frederick Dunbar at the request of Dunbar's physician, Dr. Blake. Dunbar, it seems, has been taken seriously ill and was repeatedly asking for Mary. Sometime after her arrival, while seated in the study next to the sick room, Dr. Blake said to Mary, Mrs. Noble, this telegram has just come from Miss Clara Dunbar, Mr. Dunbar's older sister. She left Boston by plane at midnight. It's 2.30 now. She should arrive here at Greystone very shortly. I wish you would stay and meet her. Well, I... I'd like to meet Miss Dunbar, Dr. Blake. I'm sure she'll be able to tell you something about the girl in the painting who looks so much like me. The girl who apparently at one time meant so much to her brother. I'm not so sure of that, Mrs. Noble. I met Miss Dunbar here at Greystone when I first came to attend Mr. Dunbar a few years ago, and, well, she's rather a difficult person from whom to get information. Meanwhile, back at Mary's home in Rosehaven, 20 miles away, Tom Bryson has just come downstairs in his pajamas and dressing gown, where he joins Larry and Maud Marlowe in the living room. He's saying to Larry... But Larry, where would Mary go so late at night and in this storm? Even if she'd gone to the village, she'd be back home here by now. Well, it's 2.30. Tom, I've been away from home for a long time. 
I don't know Mary's neighbors here in Rosehaven, but you and Maud should know who she'd be likely to call on. I know everybody here in this neighborhood that Mary does, Larry, and there's no one she knows well enough to go visiting on a night like this. That is, well, unless someone was taken suddenly ill. Yes, Mary would go in a case of illness, all right, <laughs> storm or no storm. But who could it be? Why, of course. Why didn't we think of that before? Think of what before? Dunbar. Frederick Dunbar. He was taken ill tonight while Mary and I were at his home. Oh, but Larry, Dunbar's home, Greystone, is 20 miles from here, over on the North Shore. What's 20 miles, Tom? Dunbar, you know, could have sent his car for her. You're right, Larry. That's why Mary didn't take her umbrella. The chauffeur probably had one, so she just wore a raincoat. Oh, but Larry, what on earth could Mary do to help Mr. Dunbar? I don't know, Tom, but I'm going to find out. Hand me that telephone book. Yeah, I'll find the number, Larry. I don't know why Mary should go there, but let's hope she did, because then at least we'll know where she is. Well, I know one thing. If she isn't at Dunbar's, I'll report her disappearance to the police. Yeah, Dunbar, Dunbar. Uh, well, what's his first name, Larry? Frederick, I think. Uh, here's Frederick Allen Dunbar. Would that be he? That's the fellow, Tom. I remember now his middle name is Allen. Ah, uh, here it is. Frederick Allen Dunbar. Greystone at Jeffers Landing, Long Island. The number is Jeffers. Oh, Mrs. Noble, a telephone call just came for you. Telephone call for me, Dr. Blake? Yes, you may take it in the ante room if you wish. But it's 2.30. Surely my husband hasn't... Oh, excuse me, doctor. Certainly. Hello? Oh, Larry, darling, it is you. Mary, what on earth happened? We woke up and found you weren't here, and we've been worried to death. Oh, darling, I'm so sorry. Perhaps I should have left a note on the desk in the living room, but... Well, you see, dear, Mr. Dunbar became suddenly ill, and Dr. Blake, Mr. Dunbar's physician, sent the chauffeur to our house to get me. But, Mary, why didn't you waken me? I'd gladly have gone with you. I know, dear, but... Well, I didn't want to disturb you or the others. But, darling, how on earth did you know I was here at Greystone? We didn't. We just took a chance. Larry, you don't mean that Mort and Tom are awake and downstairs, too. Yes, they are, dear. Darling, how is Mr. Dunbar? Is he better? No, Larry, he's very ill. And the strange thing is that every little while he regains consciousness and calls my name. Calls your name? Yes. He keeps asking for me. That's why Dr. Blake sent the chauffeur to bring me here. That's strange, is calling your name. Larry, darling, please go back to bed and don't worry. Mr. Dunbar's sister has just arrived by plane from Boston, so I'll be home before long. You sure you don't want me to come after you now? No, dear. Now, please go to bed, won't you? If you say so, darling. What sort of person is this sister? Oh, I don't know, Larry. I haven't met her yet. When she arrived, Dr. Blake took her straight to her brother's room. I'm going to meet her and then... You say my brother has been in this semi-conscious condition since 10 o'clock, Dr. Blake... Yes, Miss Dunbar. That's why I wired you to come here to Greystone at once. You acted wisely, Doctor. By the way, didn't I see a young woman here in the study when I passed through to go to the sick room? Yes, there is a young lady here. Who is she? Well, she's a... well, she seems to be a friend of Mr. Dunbar's. A friend, eh? And I suppose, having heard my brother is critically ill, she's come here to be on hand in case he should pass away. Frankly, Miss Dunbar, the woman is a bit of a mystery to me. She's no mystery to me, Doctor. Not if it's the one who posed for this atrocious painting that hangs here over the mantel. Oh? Then you recognize the resemblance and you know all about her, Miss Dunbar. I recognize the resemblance, all right, but I know nothing about her except that she must be the immediate cause of my brother's illness. Well, that's most enlightening. Miss Dunbar, perhaps you know how many years ago that portrait was made. No, Dr. Blake, I don't. I saw it for the first and last time a few years ago when I was visiting my brother, much against my will, here at Greystone. What's, what's her name, this woman I saw when I came in? Her name is Noble, Mary Noble. She's in my brother's will, I suppose. I haven't seen your brother's will, Miss Dunbar. I'm his physician, not his attorney. Well, who is this, this noble woman? Where did she come from? Well, she's an actress. Quite a well-known actress, too. An actress, eh? I might have known Frederick would take up with someone like that. How long has he known her? That I don't know. When I arrived here earlier this evening, your brother was unconscious. And he has been in a coma ever since. When he occasionally regains consciousness, he asks for Mary Noble. Hmm, so it's gone that far, eh? That woman really has a hold on my brother. But what puzzles me, Miss Dunbar, 
Is that she insists she's met your brother only yesterday? Yesterday? Why, that portrait was painted at least four years ago. Really? Well, Miss Dunbar, I wonder why this woman should deny she is the subject of the portrait. So she denies it, eh? Where is she now? Just after you came in, she had a phone call. I told her to take it in the anteroom. Do you mean to tell me that this, this, what's her name? Noble, Mary Noble. Is she allowed to receive phone calls here in my brother's house at this time of night or morning? It's after 2.30. As I said before, Miss Dunbar, I am your brother's physician, not the housemaid. Well, I'll soon put a stop to that. Where is Mrs. Thomas, the housekeeper? I repeat, I I know, I know, you're not the butler. Very well, Dr. Blake, I shall wake the housekeeper myself. I'm not going to have this... This this woman, this actress, do as she pleases while I'm here in my brother's home. The young lady in question is coming now, Miss Dunbar. Uh, Mrs. Noble. Mrs. Noble? Did you say Mrs.? Yes, she's married, I believe. Yes, Doctor, did you call? Mrs. Noble, may I present Miss Dunbar, Mr. Dunbar's sister? Oh, I've been so worried. I'm awfully glad you came, Miss Dunbar. I'm very glad I did, too. Won't you sit down, please? Thank you. Oh, if you'll excuse me, I'll go into Mr. Dunbar's room to check his condition. Very well, but let me know if Frederick is better or worse, Doctor. I will, Miss Dunbar. So, you are Mrs. Noble. You say that as though you'd heard my name many times before. You're an actress by trade, I understand. By profession, yes. Well, I must admit the artist did you justice. If you're referring to the painting over the mantel, it is a very excellent portrait. But I'm not the woman in the picture. So I just learned from Dr. Blake. He said you denied being the subject of the portrait. I do deny it, Miss Dunbar. Oh, come, come, Miss Noble. I'm not blind. But really... I'm not interested in your friendship with my brother. I'm more interested in whether you... I'm more interested in in your friendship than whether you did or did not uh, pose for this painting. Miss Dunbar, I don't think I'm obliged to listen to any further insinuations... ...from either you or Mr. Dunbar. Don't you, really? No, I don't. I came here to your brother's house because Because I knew... Because you thought my brother was dying and that I, his only living relative, would not be here. Oh, I don't doubt that Frederick has left everything he possesses to you, just like him. But there are ways of breaking will. Miss Dunbar. Don't think I haven't heard of you before. It was because of you that my brother and I haven't spoken for the past four years. To be sure, I never knew your name. You were always referred to merely as that, uh, that girl in the painting. What surprises me is that you're so youthful looking. Miss Dunbar, I've already told you uh, that... Mrs. Noble, Mr. Dunbar's calling for you. Please come quickly. Oh, yes, Dr. Blake. Excuse me, please, Miss Dunbar. Mary Noble, eh? So an actress may be the future mistress of Greystone. Well, we'll see about that. Clara Dunbar is convinced that Mary is after the Dunbar fortune. She is the girl in the portrait on the wall. There's hatred in her eyes as she watches Mary leave the room, and there's a plan in her mind that may cause trouble and harm to Mary. For further developments, be sure and hear Monday's episode of Backstage Wife, the story of Mary Noble, and her husband Larry Noble, famous Broadway star, now in the Coast Guard. Keep it clean with Energine. Don't be embarrassed by dirty grease spots on your clothing. Use Energine cleaning fluid. You'll be amazed at the way it makes stubborn, dirty grease spots go right before your eyes in a jiffy. Energine is unsurpassed for cleaning dresses, suits, ties, blouses, even upholstery and rugs. Remember, Energine will remove even the most stubborn grease spots from almost anything you can think of speedily and efficiently. No matter how much you pay, you can get nothing that's better than Energine for cotton, wool, silk, rayon, velvet, or lace. Just follow directions, and your things will be clean without harm, with no telltale rings to mark the places where spots have been. Energine not only cleans beautifully, but is also easy to use. Get the big economy bottle today at your store. Remember, Energine gets it clean, so keep it clean with Energine. Mary Noble, backstage wife, will be on the air again Monday at the same time. 
Ford Bond, speaking for the makers of Energine Shoe White and Cleaning Fluid. <laughs> 